How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today, we're going to talk about the Branson 5220. We're going to do an overview of the 5220, but what I'm going to do it as, I'm going to do it as a person who's on the tractor lot shopping for a new tractor. So if you want specifics, you can go to www.bransontractors.com and you can get like the lifting capacities, the wheelbase, and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go over that kind of details, but I am going to talk to you about from an operator standpoint. Now I will say that this is a demo tractor from Branson. They're not paying me a red cent to make this video, but they did let us borrow the tractor to demo it on our channel. So I really want to go over it and I'm going to really put the tractor through its paces. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and see all the videos that we're going to make on the 5220 in the near future. Now I'm going to start at the front and work our way toward the back of the tractor. And the really cool thing I want to start out with is this uh, skid steer quick attach system. Now this is something so simple, but it is so neat, right? Look at this right here. See how this comes up and then it flares out? Let me tell you, like, well, what's the big deal? It just flares out. As an operator sitting inside that cab, you're looking over to your left or to your right, that little flare gives you about two more inches to line up your attachment that you're going to put on your front end loader. That, my friend, is huge. Another thing I like about this front end loader is this kickstand that they have here. You just simply pull the pins out from this. You remove the cotter pins, pull these pins out. The kickstand drops down. Uh, it's one on the other side as well. It's very, very convenient. Two kickstands are always better than one. So I've got about nine hours on this tractor so far. So eight and a half, nine hours, something like that. So let's look at the power plant on this 5220. First of all, the hood is super easy to access. Once you have the hood open, you have easy access to your air filter and to your battery for maintenance. Now you will see a DPF on here. What you have to know about the regen system on the Branson is, it's what they call a passive regen. And we're going to talk about this when we get into the operator workstation. But this thing regens while you work. You don't have to stop working. Uh, there is no override or bypass. Uh, you just run this thing like normal. It does the regen process. And you just go on about your business. That was huge for me when I was, when I was looking at, at these Coupe J engines. One cool thing about this Coupe J engine is, uh, it's fun to say, Coupe J, right? <laughs> but not only that, but the Coupe J engine, actually, they actually partnered with Cummings to design this engine. So this Cummings-inspired diesel turbocharged four-cylinder engine that they've got in here provides a lot of power. And you know, Cummings, well, I mean, Cum the name Cummings just kind of speaks for itself in the diesel industry, you know what I mean? We keep moving back. I want to talk about the dual hydraulic pumps. Now they have dual one dedicated to the steering system and one dedicated to the lift system. Now I personally lifted about 2,000 pounds with it the other day. We had a 275 gallon IBC tote full of diesel fuel and uh, I've got the five 600 pound grapple on here and I was able to lift that container full of fuel up to uh, full height on here is to put it on like a four foot platform or whatever. So the, I've been really impressed with the lifting capacity. I didn't have any counterweight on it neither. So that's a huge thing. The cab models come with two front lights, of, your, of course your rear view mirrors, and then two work lights in the back as well. And I'll show you the switches for those when we talk about the operator workstation. Let's talk a little bit about the rear end. So the rear end on this thing, you get two remotes in the back, right? And we talk, we'll talk about the detent and the non-detent uh, spools when we talk about the inside the cab. And also, look how beefy this rear end is built. It's all cast iron, so it's really well built and uh, real beefy. But one thing, like I said, you're out here and you're shopping for a tractor, you're gonna look for certain things. If you're looking at your lift arms, how to level your lift arms, take a look at this crank handle and this turn handle here. I'm talking about, look, I can do that with one finger, right? So it's a lot easier to level your implement on the rear end of your tractor 
with a turnstile or crank style handle than it is if you take that turnbuckle and try to, you know, that cumbersome process to get it leveled up and down that way. So this top link is really easy to turn. It's probably because it's new, right? Hadn't got, hadn't got a chance to get weathered yet. Uh, but hopefully I'll be replacing this with a hydraulic top link soon because I've been wanting one of those for a while. But the PTO here, we're going to talk about the 540 uh, economy and the 540 standard PTO here in a sec. But it's giving you 48 horsepower, 47 and a half, 48 horsepower out of your PTO. Now your lift arms are telescopic, so the ends of your lift arms can adjust it. I have, I have a quick hitch on the back of mine, obviously. Uh, but if you don't have a quick hitch, those telescopic lift arms are really, really, really important to help line up implements to get make it easier on you as the operator. And I always like, you know, as far as stabilization and as far as uh, the getting your three-point lift arms separated for the proper implement that you've got on the back, I've always preferred the pin style, the hole and pin style system as opposed to some of the other ones that you'll see on the market. On the passenger side of the tractor, You'll notice how they take the hoses, they run them down, and they tuck them up underneath the tractor here. Now, I'm a big fan of that as well. They're not out; of, they're not past the wheelbase. They're up under, but they're above the frame. So you're you're not going to run over anything with it because it's above the frame, and you've got the protection of the front wheel and the front axle on the hydraulic hoses. Let's take a look at the inside of the operator workstation. But now would be a really good time for you to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. We're going to be making a ton of videos about this Branson 5220. You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to see how powerful and just what a beast this tractor is. So go ahead and click those two buttons. First thing you'll notice as you go to the operator workstation is the rubber mats here. The rubber floorboards on in the uh, floorboard section of the operator workstation. That's a really, you know, just take these out, wash them down. You're good to go. As I mentioned earlier, mine's a shuttle shift. So you have the forward and reverse lever here. Of course, you have your standard, you know, turn signals, horn, lights, that switch. Kind of standard on most tractors. If you look more back toward the back of the tractor, you got a very large cup holder here, some storage here. You got a 12 volt adapter here. I got my phone charger and then some storage over here. And kind of below your knee kneecaps as you're sitting in the seat, you have your PTO switch here. Now you actually have two PTOs. You have the Economy 540 and the standard 540. Save you a little fuel here on the economy. Here's your four-wheel drive lever. Here's your hydraulic flow lever. You know, you can transport implements and turn this flow off without the risk of them, you know, leaking down as you're traveling down the road. And then, of course, your diff lock. The cab models do come with the Branson Deluxe seats. Very wide, very comfortable. You can adjust it up and down with this lever here. You can move it back and forth with this lever here. And then on that side, there's a lever. I'll show you here in a sec. That makes the back go up and down. The cab models also come with tilt steering, which is this lever here. So this is something you have to get used to as a cab owner. Now I'm coming from an open station tractor. So some things I have to get used to is I've never had something with a tilt steering before. And the, so I have to slide the seat all the way back, lift the steering wheel up to access in and out of the tractor. So that's something I'm going to have to get used to. Also in a cab tractor, the sounds are different. And so if you notice up here in this corner, there's actually a radio that you have. It comes with a radio, or it may be optional, I'm not sure, but mine came with a radio. So you have to, I don't particularly, I might be in the minority, but I don't particularly care for the radio, to be honest with you. And the reason I say that is because I want to hear what's going on. I want to hear the engine. I want to hear, you know, the squeaks, you know, the beats and the bangs, I guess you'd say, right? You know, as I'm lifting stuff, I want to hear how the engine's responding. I want to hear if I got something hitting the side of the tractor. So I'm not a big fan of the radio yet. Now, as I get more comfortable in the tractor, that may change. But let's talk about the top of it here for just a minute. You have your AC here. You have to depress this button to turn the AC on. So let me turn the switch on here. The fan came on, but you actually have to depress and then that light comes on for your AC. And then of course the temperature control here. You have your front and rear lights and your front and rear windshield wipers plus the wash here on this side. A cab overhead light and you can make it go with on or the door or off. I just keep it off. And as you look to the left of the operator, you have your range selector here. You've got three ranges, one, two, three. Uh, and then your parking brake, which gives you the three ranges here gives you 12 forward and 12 reverse gears over here because here's your your shifter one two three four here 
and behind it you have your hydraulic lift control so that your th this is your three-point lift lever controls here. Now you do have two rear remotes. One's got a detent, one does not. So that's uh, different applications for if you're using like a hydraulic top link or a backhoe, you know, the detent and uh, one with the detent and one without the detent is very handy. On the right side, you have your joystick, standard functions as any tractor, standard controls. But I do want to show you something about the joystick here in just a second. You have your PTO. You have an automatic and an independent PTO, right? So the automatic works off the lift of your three-point hitch. So if your three-point hitch gets raised with this lever here, it's past a certain threshold, then your PTO will stop spinning. And then the independent, your, your PTO works with your clutch. Let me show you what the dash instrument lights look like. You have glow plugs, battery, uh, temp, and then a regen light. And something you don't notice, and we talked about this when we looked at the engine, you don't have a regen bypass or a regen override button anywhere in the cockpit because there is no such thing. Because just like we talked about when we talked about the engine compartment, it's a, that passive regen system. Here's your throttle. You do have independent brakes. You move this lever here. And now your steering brakes work left and right. And then you do a, you flip that lever back down. Now they work in concert with each other. And there's the foot throttle. You are going to have two mirrors for your rear view mirror. You got a windshield wiper in the front and a windshield wiper in the back. The back window does open with this ha uh, handle here. And then it gets you a nice breeze flowing along. And if you want to close it, you have a handle here to close the window and then secure it as such. This is something I wanted to show you on the joystick. Here's your integrated third function control. So when I have a grapple, I can open and close it with this button here. So check out this little lever here. If I push this in, now it locks my joystick and I can't, you know, accidentally lower it, raise it, whatever the case may be. But if I take it out here, like so, now my joystick works. So if you're if you got kids around or if it's on the lot and your dealer uh, has got their bucket raised or something like that for demo, they just simply push that in. Now my joystick's locked. I think that's a pretty neat feature. So you can see this Branson offers a lot of creature comforts for the operator. They really think about the operator when they built this thing. So if you're tractor shopping, really give Branson a close look because I think you'll like what you see. Again, they're BransonTractors.com will have all the specifics on their capacities and stuff. So go visit them on that website. Up here is a little white circle. Click on that to subscribe to our channel. Down below that is another Branson video. We'd love for you to go watch it. You guys take care. We'll catch you on the next one.